Hello there folks, Bonky Cook here, aka your Lonely Achievement God, coming at you with my From Zero to One Thousand Achievement Hunting series for the game Lawn Mowing Simulator and the Career Mode, and I am actually a year in the future from when this was first created. I wanted to make a bit of an introduction to the introduction, um, and tell everyone that I'm sorry. Uh, I've been trying to go back to update all of my lawn mowing simulator content to reflect the string trimmers they added. Um, so I've, I've re-recorded all of the challenges and I've got achievement videos for all the DLC achievements now. But I can't go back and redo the career mode. So the following videos, the five videos uh, in this playlist and the uh, career mode walkthrough are not up to date. They don't include the string trimmers. Um, and they don't include some of the quality of life changes that they've made since I recorded this a year ago, such as uh, the contract timer finishing when you finish cutting the grass and uh, not requiring you to drive up onto the ramp to finish uh, or to stop the timer. There's little things like that that they've changed. The good news is 90 to 95 percent of the information in this is still viable. Um, the things that have changed are the string trimmers for the career mode, really. That's the only thing. Uh, they have, I, I think, added one extra contract that wasn't in there before. That is, um, basically, the string trimmer is required uh, because the you can't really get a mower into some of the spots on the lawn. But for the most part, uh, the contracts are almost all the same. The uh, locations are all the same. Um, the only thing that's changed as far as going through the career mode is having to purchase string trimmers for every employee and having to use them, which means your financials are going to be off. You're going to have to spend more money on the string trimmers for every person, including your, yourself, and so you're probably going to have to push back some of the actions I put in the video. So I recommend having like a, a piece of paper and a pencil nearby or a notepad open on your computer, whatever you want to do. So that if I say do this, just make a note that the next time you have the money available to do that, you should do it. Um, Otherwise, most of it is still the same. You're still going to be going through the con, uh, the career using contracts. When you have the money, you're going to build up your employees. You're going to upgrade your HQ. You're going to purchase advertisements so that you build your RP up faster. All of that stuff is still the same as it was a year ago when I recorded this. But financially, you're going to have to push back some of the steps in order to follow this properly. And I do apologize for that. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, reach out to me. But uh, I'm going to send it back to my year younger self, uh, who's starting the From Zero to 1000 career mode walkthrough. So again, uh, ask me questions if you have them. But if not, uh, just you know, make a little note of the actions I take so that you can follow them when you have enough money Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, Donkey Cook here, a.k.a. your Lonely Achievement God, coming at you with a revision to our From Zero to 1000 Achievement Walkthrough for Lawn Mowing Simulator. This is going to be the second iteration of this recording. We're going to be going from zero to 1000 on an account together with a little bit of a caveat here because of all the... Uh, updates to the game lately, my initial walkthrough of the game is no longer valid because the uh, updates have changed so much. So we are re-recording an achievement walkthrough for Lawn Mowing Simulator. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking you through the entire career mode, basically step by step. Um, unfortunately, there are some deviations, so you're not going to be able to follow along with me completely, but you'll get the gist of what's going on here. There's also uh, a text walkthrough that I have posted on my website. I will link to that down below, and uh, there's there'll be timestamp links in the description as well if you want to find a specific achievement around the time that it pops for me. That's uh, that's how I am making up my Lawn Mowing Simulator is honestly a pretty chill and relaxing game. I very much enjoyed the time that I've spent with it. Um, it was published by Curve Digital, developed by Skyhook Games. It initially released 
on the 10th of August of 2021 and is currently purchasable for a price of $29.99. Of course, your currency may vary by your region. There are 42 achievements for 1000G and as of this recording, which is September 16th, only 16 of the 1,776 people on True Achievements have completed the game. And I'm going to show you how to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in all honesty, folks, this is going to be my last update. If they do change anything drastically from this point on, I won't be re-editing my videos. I'll probably just release a little video uh, explaining what has changed. Because this was a lot of work. Um, it's not, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. It's not one of your one hour completions where it's easy to re-edit and redo your videos. Uh, this is a 30, 35, maybe 40 hour completion, depending on how well you pick up the expert challenges. Um, and the changes that they made with the updates means our ability to skip things is drastically reduced. Um, what they did is if you skip a contract, the, I'm sorry, if you skip a contract before, your employees would still do their contract to the maximum of their ability. What they've done now is not only do they not do their contracts to the maximum of their abilities, um, you get a percentage of the final or, or of the estimated money amount based on their skill level. Um, if you skip a contract at 0%, all of your employees do the contract at 0%. So you no longer can just skip ahead and have your employees do all the work for you, which means you're going to be doing all of the mowing contracts. Um, for the most part, we're going to be sticking to smaller contracts, especially early on when you have the weaker mowers. Um, there is a point where we will upgrade to the biggest mower in the game. But until that, we're going to be focusing on the shortest contracts for our achievement walkthrough. And as I said earlier, there will be in this playlist on my YouTube channel, there will be probably five career videos, each about an hour each. It, We'll see uh, off the top of my head if there's good spots to uh, stop. I'm not going to be showing you all of the contracts that we do because that would be an extra 10 hours of footage that no one needs to see. Um, however, I will be showing you like unique contracts. I'm going to show you the very first time we mow. I'll show you when the first stripe cut and litter contracts show up. And some of the miscellaneous achievements we'll, we'll be doing together. But for the most part, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm doing this contract. Um, we've done the ground check and picked up the objects to clear the lawn and I will rejoin you when the contract is complete and that's how I'm going to handle things because once you do one or two lawns you get the general idea of how you're going to attack each lawn when you get to them and showing all that extra footage would just not do anyone any good so we're going to go ahead and get started here folks um, right off the bat we're going to choose our profile and it lets you know about the update we got some patterson mowers and now we're at the main menu you can hit right bumper to bumper over to the challenge mode as you can see right now we have one of nine unlocked in each of the tiers here it's because these new challenges are available right off the bat and they do not count towards the challenge achievements. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire achievement list. I know some people do that and in some of my videos I have done that as well but there's like 15 secret achievements and there'd be a lot of effort just going through all of that when you can't see what's going on so I'm not going to bother with that but I do want to point out that you can see all of these challenges unlock at credible rank 3, rank 4, rank 5, etc established rank four and five trusted rank professional rank esteemed ranked and distinguished 
we were going to have to get our RP rank all the way up to Distinguished to unlock all of the challenges, and that's why the challenge videos will be after the career videos in my playlist. Uh, I recommend you tackle the uh, career mode first with me, and then once you get used to everything, the challenges may not be so difficult. Um, but the expert challenges will be the only thing that really gives you any challenge. Everything else is just a matter of playing the game. The expert challenges can be very difficult, and I do have the videos for each challenge up on my channel for you if you're having trouble or would just like to jump ahead and figure out what's going on. So let's go ahead and start our career mode. You're looking at probably... As I said, 35-ish hours with the walkthrough. It depends on the expert challenge, but if you go in blind, you're not gonna, you're probably gonna be between 40 and 50 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and skip the tutorials. If you wanna go through the tutorial, feel free, but I'm not gonna be covering that here. We're just gonna name our company whatever we want. We're gonna pick whatever logo we want, and the player doesn't matter. Do whatever you want for these. You can customize them if you want. And we're going to pick the Night Mower. It is the most expensive, but I find it the easiest to mow with of the starting three mowers. I'm not a big fan of the Patterson or the Stega mowers, so I prefer the Night. And for the purposes of the walkthrough, I will be assuming that you purchased the Night. And there's our first achievement, ladies and gents. The dream begins. And now we're at the main career menu. Uh, if you hit left bumper once, you go to the headquarters tab. You can see down below there we can upgrade it so that we get an extra bay. That's going to be something we do right off the bat so we can get a second mower. We can purchase upgraded headquarters here. Um, eventually we need to purchase all of these for an achievement, but for now it's not going to be feasible. I do want to point something out though. If you go to any of these other garages, you'll see that the cost to buy is 160,000, 175, 200,000. That doesn't mean you have to have 200,000 in your inventory or in your pocket, essentially. Um, that means so if you look in the upper right there, it says HQ overview of the red wall building. That's the one we own. Our current HQ value is 150k. So in order to purchase the Moderna estate, we would be selling essentially our red wall for 150 and we'd need another 50,000 to purchase the Moderna. So it's not nearly as soul crushing as it initially seems, especially when you realize you're only getting like 400 bucks per contract, um, having to get to 200k just to purchase the next uh Headquarters would be, well, soul-crushing, really. That would take a very long time. Luckily, it does not, and I wanted to point that out right away. You can purchase advertisements. Uh, for our purposes, we will only be purchasing the printed media when we have the money to do so. These ones aren't really worth it. Um, they are if you have a ton of money, but we're not going to. So what we're going to be focusing on is getting the printed media ones because it lasts for 20 days and gives us a decent amount. Obviously, it doesn't give us as much, but uh, I prefer just focusing on the printed media. And then you can edit your company and your player whenever you want. Um, this is the main contract menu. For now, we only have one contract available, and this little tab here will tell you the value of the contract, how much uh, RP rank points you're getting, and how complex the c uh, contract is. Later on you'll have five contracts to choose from, but for now we only have the one. On the right side there you'll see we have the overview for Monday, March 1st of 2021. It'll tell you kind of an overview of everything. So you have uh, zero of one contracts, no employees assigned, you have no vehicles assigned, and it will tell you the projected earnings of all the contracts you've committed to. Um, right now, that will only be yours, but later on you'll have employees, and that'll give you an estimate of how much money you might earn uh, weekly. Or daily, excuse me. I'm gonna, I'm probably going to do that a lot. For some reason, I keep saying every week, and it's every day 
you work every day. And mind of soul go over that while we're here. In the upper right hand corner there, you'll see Monday, March 1st of 2021 with a sun symbol next to it. That means the weather is sunny. That will tell you what the weather is for the day before you go out, although it doesn't really make a huge difference. You have a bar there, that's your RP bar, and it says right below that we have the newcomer rank. As I showed you at the challenge menu, there are like six or seven different ranks you have to go through and there are five or tiers of ranks, excuse me, that you have to go through and there are five levels of each uh, tier. So there's newcomer rank one through rank five and then we'll graduate to whatever the next one is and move on from there. And right above that are the company name to Gickle and the amount of money we currently have. Since we bought the Knight, which is the most expensive more, we only have 350 bucks right now. Um, I know it's not bucks or dollars or whatever, but it's easiest for me to just say that instead of currency or euros or whatever the currency might be. So I'm probably just going to say dollars. I Forgive me for being an ignorant American, but it's just easier to get that across. Um, we're going to go into detail about the contract when we finish going through everything else and are ready to start. But for now, tab over to the garage tab. And as you can see, we can shop here or um, at this main menu, all of the mowers we own will be to the right of the shop tab. So as you can see, we have our night there. We can go in and perform maintenance on the night. You're going to want to do this every couple of contracts, um, mostly because it's cheaper to repair your vehicle here than it is to do it in the field. Um, the only thing you can repair in the field are your blades and your fuel. Obviously, you can refill the fuel tank or you can repair the blades, but it is a flat $50 fee to repair your blades out in the field. And if you repair them from this menu, it costs a percentage. So um, I highly recommend never repairing your blades in the field unless it is affecting your cutting. If you made a mistake, forgot to update or keep up on your maintenance. Um, once your blade condition falls below 50%, it affects how well you cut the grass. And if that happens, then by all means, repair your mower. But for the most part, try to remember to come back to this menu to repair your mowers when that happens. We don't have any attachments we can purchase for the night mower, but if we ever do, we will come to this tab and you can purchase them and attach them from that, uh, from that tab. And then you just have statistics about the mower. You can sell the vehicle and you can part exchange up to a more expensive one or down to a less expensive one. We're not going to be focusing on that right now, but we will later on. <clears throat> and then at the shop tab, you can of course go and check all the mowers. We're eventually going to be purchasing and using the Groundsmaster 3300 by Toro. It is, in my opinion, the best mower in the game. Um, but for the most part, eventually we will have to purchase all of these. Except, uh, I'm not entirely sure about purchasing the Patterson mowers, so we're going to actually check that ourselves as we go through the game. But later on, we will be manipulating the loan system a little bit to be able to purchase all of the mowers at once. And uh, so don't worry about any of that stuff yet. Then finally on the right here we have our finance tab, um, basically the loan tab, honestly. It does give you a little bit of financial information. But at the bottom here we can apply for loans. As you can see, we can apply for loans right now. And loans give you uh, an insane interest rate. So um, we're going to be abusing the loan system later on. To get our achievements done a little bit faster, but do be cautious because of the interest rates. Taking out loans can be um, detrimental to the long-term health of your company. Although they shouldn't have too many problems, and there's a an achievement for going bankrupt and coming back from it. So might work out for you. Again, we will be covering that later on in the video, but if it happens to you along the way, no big deal. So before we jump into the contract here, we need to uh, 
take a look at the details here. We get a brief description of what the contract is in the upper left. In a summary, it's a small area, flower beds, flat, very simple. Your first contract is designed to be very simple for you. You get about 295 bucks for doing the contract and 50 RP. There's the complexity bar again. Um, the complexity is going to be based on uh, not only... Well, mostly what is considered in the summary there, that it, there's a small area, are there obstacles you have to avoid, is it flat, that kind of stuff will contribute to the complexity. However, in the real world, of course, the height of the grass is going to make a difference as well. So, uh, if you look at the bottom there, we have all these different yellow headings Sorry about that, folks. I was a little distracted. So at the bottom of the contract thing, or screen here, on the left you'll see an employee and vehicle tab. That's where you can choose the employee. Currently we just have ourselves and the mower. Currently we just have the night. And next to it are all these little yellow headings that give you some information about the level. You have your completion target. Um, you will have 99.0%. 0.5% and 0.9% as targets throughout your time in the game. Obviously, 99.9 .9 is a lot more difficult than 99.5 or 0. 99.9 um, .9 does not give you a lot of things to miss, so uh, keep that in mind when you're choosing a contract. For the career mode, you don't have to worry about it too much, but it's very important for the challenges that we'll be doing at the end. In fact, when you do the challenges, I do recommend skipping to the end of the videos that I have recorded, just so you can see what the cut percentage to finish is. Um, because that is kind of the biggest um, thing to keep an eye out. One of the expert challenges is really difficult, but you only have a 99.5% cut requirement, which gives you leeway to not run into things, which is one of the biggest problems with that challenge. Um, I actually almost gave up because I thought I was going to need a 99.9% .9 ratio, or a uh, cut percentage, and I didn't. And so I made the challenge harder than it was trying to be too perfect. And you didn't need to be that perfect. So for the career mode, you don't really need to worry about the percent cut. But when you go through the challenges, I highly recommend it. Um, it doesn't actually display it in the challenge menu for most of them. So checking my videos at the end when I finish the challenge will give you an idea of what the cut percent is. And I do recommend paying attention to that um, when you do the challenges yourself. The contract is a general cut that will say stripe cut or litter contract later on when those contracts show up, but for now everything is going to be a general cut. It'll tell you what height it wants you to cut the grass. That is the cutting height there. It doesn't mean a whole lot to us um, when we jump in in all honesty. You can see the current grass range down below that to the left. 13 to 20 centimeters again that doesn't mean a whole lot to us um, it just means that you know we're cutting it down to two to three in two or three times what it originally is however later on this contract can show up with grass that is up to 27 centimeters tall which is much more difficult to cut you just kind of have to get a feel for the heights of the grass and how much your mower can handle to figure out how long contracts are going to take. On the right there, you see we have a ground check time limit, which is four minutes. Never worry about the ground check time limit. You're never, almost never, going to come close to that. And the recommended cut time. The recommended cut time is based on the recommended deck width you see in the bottom left there. However, the game isn't always accurate with the recommended cut times. Sometimes you're going to easily complete your contract uh, before the recommended cut time. And sometimes, if you're, depending on the mower you're using, it's going to take you a significantly longer amount of time to do the re uh, contract. It's kind of, again, a matter of just experiencing the contracts and knowing what you're going to be running into. But in general, try to find the contracts that have the least amount of time 
with the lowest deck width. And that's how you're going to determine how long the contracts are going to be. There's not a perfect method to figuring that out just by looking at these menus. Um, I think there's like 31 different levels, and eventually you're just going to know which levels are going to take you longer. But that's kind of the overview. On the left here, we're going to select player, which is us, and the night mower, and we'll confirm the contract, and we'll be brought back to the contract menu. And now in the overview on the right there, you can see we have one contract projected to earn us $295. And we're going to go ahead and get started, folks. This is going to be our first contract and I'm gonna go through the basics with you we're gonna run through all of the simple little things you need to do and how I recommend doing them as you go throughout the game so press a ignore your vehicle for now pause the game and tab over now there's a one option menu here that's entirely up to you if you want to change any of these but I'm gonna tab over to this screen and while I'm not going to invert anything, I am going to go to the sprint toggle and have it be toggle instead of hold. And that's the only thing I'm going to change. Now when I run around, I can hit the right bumper and I'll just start running and I don't have to hold the button or, or do anything weird like that. Um, obviously, a left analog to move, right analog to turn, right bumper to sprint. And we're going to be running around the lawn now. We have to find items that are on the lawn. Now you can see when we got near it, a little eye popped up and you can hit A to pick the item up. And we have one out of our five objects collected. In the upper right hand corner, it tells you how many objects there are and it gives you the time limit to pick them up. What I generally do is I run around the outside, giving it a look. And I do run. There is an achievement for running for a mile, so I recommend running at all times. And when you see that little information icon pop up, I recommend stopping and picking up the item. And what we're going to do is then, once our first lap is done, we're going to make a second lap more towards the center of the item, or the, the item, the lawn, and we're going to look for the other items we are still missing. There's one, and there's one. And once we have all five, we can run back to the mower and get started. We're gonna go ahead, press A to get on the mower. We're gonna hold the X button to start the engine. We're gonna hit right on the D-pad to increase the throttle, and then we're gonna use the trigger, the right trigger, to drive forward. The left trigger will back you up. There's all sorts of different things to know here. I prefer, mowing in first person mode so I'm gonna hit Y to do that but before we get started you can hold the B button to get off the mower this will allow you to check the mower as you can see we can now hit Y to fill our fuel you'd also be able to look at the front of the mower and press B to replace the blades and you can hit Y to recover the mower if you've got it stuck somewhere. This doesn't happen very often, but it does occasionally pop up. So if you are stuck, you can hit Y and it'll you know, respawn your mower somewhere else. When you're ready, jump back on and we need to start the engine again right on the D-pad. Now we're good to go. Um, we're going to go in and pause the game as you need to know what your cut height is. So... Uh, that's always displayed at the pause menu if you don't remember it from the beginning of the contract. And ours is 5 to 6 centimeters. In the bottom right hand corner there, you can see we have a cut height of 7 centimeters. And we need to just hit down on the D-pad to get it between the 5 and 6 that are recommended. Um, we have a little speedometer there. Uh, with the yellow zeros there that will indicate how fast we're driving there's a fuel gauge in the middle and uh, in the upper right hand corner we have our progress bar 0.0 percent and the yellow line will indicate when the contract is over ours is at 99.0 percent but i only know that because i remember it from the contract screen and how much time we've spent on the contract Notifications will pop up below that for the most part. They're not really useful. They will basically tell you if you're doing something wrong or if there's 
some useless information the game wants to tell you. In the bottom left-hand corner, you have your vehicle condition, your engine condition, and your blade condition for the purposes of the career mode. None of that is all that important. It's just going to gradually decay as you go through contracts. You're going to press the B button with mowers that have a deck to drop the deck. And when you are ready to cut, you're going to hit the X button. If you drive onto the lawn and you get a notification, that means you're cutting at the wrong height. You'd have to back up and check the cut height again and change it in order to fix that. But we are at the right height. And now we're just going to drive around edging the outside of the lawn. This is how I recommend handling all of the lawns in the game. Don't worry too much about flowers, running into things, all of that fun stuff is not all that worrisome. In the career mode, the fines are relatively, and penalties are relatively small. The only real thing I've noticed is it seems like they do penalize you, or I guess it's not the correct term to say that. Your vehicle condition seems to take more of a hit from uh, running into things than it did before the update. So you may have to keep an eye on that if you're running into many solid objects. But for the most part, the vehicle condition isn't going to be much of a deal for the career mode, as I said. We just need to follow around the outside making sure we cut as far to the right as we can without damaging any flowers and we're just going to do laps around the entire one once we get to the end we're going to take a left here and now we focus on cutting over what we did slash didn't cut before I try to keep about 80% new grass, but that's going to depend on how high the, the grass is and how low the game wants you to cut. Because in the bottom right there, you see our speedometer, there's a white line moving up and down the speedometer. That tells us how much uh, stress our mower is under. If we're cutting too much grass, there's a little red arrow on the right side of the speedometer there. That if we cut too much, you'll see we overloaded our mower. If you look behind us, we left grass because we were overloading our blades and we weren't able to cut the grass properly. If that ever happens to you, just stop and back up until you've cut everything and continue going forward. Just try to realign your where the grass is coming in. You can try, you know, 50% then if you're overloading your motor, mower too much so that you can continue driving without having to stop and start. But if you ever overload your mower, just stop, back up, and take care of it. Um, when you're in the challenges, you might want to just keep driving and slow down, but for, <clears throat> for the career mode, just stop, back up, make sure you've cut everything and continue on your merry way. Um, overloading your engine will also damage the engine condition in the bottom left. Um, that is actually one of the biggest things you're going to have to learn to manage for the expert challenges, so I am making a point of it here. Because other than some penalties that will be popping up in your expert challenges, the engine overloads and damage to your engine is what is going to end most of your expert challenge runs. So, it's not a bad idea to get used to it now before you uh, start doing your expert challenges so you're, you're pr more prepared for it. But most of the career mode challenges are not going to be that difficult or the career mode contracts excuse me are not going to be difficult enough to have you stressing out about your engine condition and this is kind of all you do just drive around cutting the new grass over and over again and you're going to be doing this many times. I, I apologize if I'm not as high on this as I 
was initially, this is like my eighth time going through the game. And while this was wonderful, and I very much enjoyed the game, um, I've probably mowed lawns for close to like 300 hours in this by now. <laughs> As you can see, we overloaded the engine, so we'll just back up a little bit and make sure we cut everything and continue along. And we'll just try cutting a little bit less grass this time. So as always, if you have any questions about any of this, I'll be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, but this is kind of... This is one of a handful of contracts I'll be showing you, because for the most part, all of these cutting contracts are exactly the same. The layout's a little bit different. You have some different obstacles to avoid, but nothing substantially changes in the basic formula of the game. You're just going to cut the grass. Uh, I prefer to cut around the edges and then work my way towards the center, but obviously you can do whatever you want. Oh, that was weird. Must have bumped the right analog or something. I apologize. And you're just going to continue on mowing over and over and over again. Um, the game has changed quite a bit since it was initially launched in terms of how the achievements function uh, and how best to tackle the achievements because the a lot of the things we were able to exploit were patched out so we can no longer um, we can no longer exploit some of the mechanics that may have uh, not been thoroughly uh, either thought of or were were discovered later or you know Whatever the case may be, they decided that uh, they needed to get rid of some of these exploits that we had been using. Um, so we can no longer just skip contracts to get through the game faster, which was the significant time, um, time saver that I had discovered. So that's why I have to redo my entire walkthrough, because I had it was predicated on skipping contracts, and... Skipping contracts, for the most part, isn't viable anymore, although we still will be doing it later on in our uh, playthrough when we're done with just about everything else. When we get to the flower gardens, as you noticed, flower beds, I, I cut them. Um, cutting them is kind of... It kind of depends on what mower you, you, you're using. I like to use the knight because that left front wheel kind of gives you a good indication in the wheels, I guess, on the front right and left, give you a good indication of where you're cutting. Um, I found the Stiga and the Patterson mower very difficult to mow in first person mode. I'm not a fan of either of the mowers from uh, those two companies. I know Stega is a real company. I do not know if the Patterson mower is. I do apologize. I'm sure in real life their mowers are lovely, but I'm not a big fan of how they cut in the video game world. So I prefer using the Knight, and we will be using the Knight all the way up until we have the money to purchase the Tor Toro 3300 that I mentioned. But uh, you kind of have to get a feel for where you're cutting so that you can edge around uh, things and I found the knight and its uh, wheels here at the front do an excellent job of indicating where the cutting is happening and as you can see when we get close to a flower before we run it over or damage it the flower will bend that will help you know if you're getting close to damaging a flower as you can see, we ran into a flower, we took a fine. Um, it's not really a big deal. Again, the penalties in career mode are not substantial enough to really worry about them. 
Uh, every flower you hit, I think, is a dollar fine. Um, there are some physical objects, like statues and stuff like that later on, that if you hit them, you get a more substantial financial penalty. But it, again, in the career mode, it's not really worth worrying about that. That stuff is only important once you start trying to do the challenges. So don't stress about it too much in career mode. The career mode is supposed to be a low stress type of environment. And then if you're a masochist, you can attempt the challenges. And I do recommend taking a look at the expert challenges right away to see if there's something you are willing to tackle later on. Uh, if you're a completionist, the only thing that will keep you from completing the game is the expert challenges. There's nothing else in this game that is difficult. So, if you are a completionist, I recommend taking a look at the expert challenges, specifically challenges uh, 5 through 7, I believe, or maybe 4 through 7, are the most difficult in the expert challenge tier. You can check out my videos and just take a look and see if it's something you think you're going to be able to do. Um, I think it was expert challenge number 6, which I found to be the most difficult in the game. So, um, you're using a yellow mower. I can't remember if it's a Stiga or not. But, uh, it is quite difficult and frustrating, so if you don't think you can do that challenge, that's obviously a personal choice, but I take I would take a look at it right now because um, it was quite frustrating to get, get all the way through the game and then realize, oh no, I may not be able to 100 or 1,000 this because of this challenge. Ultimately, I was making it more difficult for myself. As I said, the cut percentage is lower than I thought, so I was trying to be too careful, and I kept running into things because of it. Um, so I don't think any of the challenges are super difficult if you come in with a good plan, but uh, I do want to point out that those are the the only real challenge in the game. The career mode will not challenge you at all. And I'm just kind of babbling to fill time until we get done with the lawn here. So once we hit that 99%, the upper right hand corner message will change and the game will be like, hey, you finished, congrats. And then you can just drive back to the trailer. If you're OCD, of course, you can finish cutting all of the way if you would like to, but for the purposes of the walkthrough, we will not. We're done cutting. We're gonna hit X to cut our blades and B to lift the uh, front of the mower back up. And you have a choice to make at the end of every contract. You can either drive straight onto the ramp, that will get you a small collision penalty, or you can back on the ramp slowly and do it safely without getting a penalty. It's not really worth the time. The penalty is like 25 cents. It's not worth uh, turning around and uh, taking all that extra time. So now we get the post-contract screen, ladies and gents. As you can see, it gives us the name of the contract, all that basic information, the 275, the 50 RP, and the complexity. On the left side there, it tells you how much damage each part of your vehicle took. The red is obviously the damage, or the use in the case of the fuel. And on the right, we have a little ledger here. We have our ground check time bonus. That's how much we got for completing the ground check quickly. And we get a base amount of money for completing the ground check. As you can see, we got 20 bucks there. Um, we get money if we complete the contract within the um, recommended cut time. So we got almost $19 for that. And if there are any valuables on the level and you pick them up, you get uh, a certain amount of money from that as well. Below that are the penalties and fines. We got penalized $6.50. We got a dollar for a flower and five fifty dollars for collisions. I don't remember what we ran into other than backing or not backing onto the ramp, but 
Apparently we ran into some things and we got $5.50 of penalties for it. Again, it's not really worth worrying about. But you'll get penalized if you don't pick up ground objects and you run over them. You'll get penalized for that. You get penalized for flowers. You get penalized for running up, or running into things. I don't know what the cleanup fee is. Um... It might be when you damage the ground, you'll see ground damage there. If you turn too sharply, you can damage the ground. Um, more so when it's rainy than when it's dry, but you can do it when it's sunny as well. Maybe that is just hand in hand with causing damage to the ground. I do not know. Um, that rarely has anything in it. And then the incorrect cut height penalty, as long as you're following along with what I did and changing your cut height before you drive on you shouldn't have any issues with that and then if you repair your vehicle in the field uh, i.e. fixing your blades or re refueling it will show up in the vehicle maintenance section there and that'll give you your total amount at the bottom of the screen we have plus 70 RP listed there and it will tell you um, how much RP that brought you along your bar so that that bar next to your company logo down below there is the same bar in the upper right hand corner and we got 70 rp from that contract so we basically went up seven tenths of the bar there and once we advance past this contract screen our bar in the upper right will advance to that amount and it tells you uh, how much money you got and then adds it to your total down at the bottom there. So we'll have $662 now. Um, most of the achievements don't pop until you skip this screen. So if you picked up, you know, 250 ground items, the achievement won't pop until we do this and press A to advance. As you can see, an achievement popped. Every story has a beginning for completing our first contract. And that's our second achievement, ladies and gents. And now that we've covered the basics, we're just going to move on to our next contract. We have the garden at the Kingsbury house. 345 bucks and 75 RP. It's not too much more complex than the one we were just doing, in all honesty. But we do need a 99.5% cut. And it has a 26 minute recommended cut time. However, as you can see, the recommended deck width is 10 centimeters higher. So this one is going to take you a little bit longer than the first contract we did. Because the recommended cut times, I believe, are similar. But the recommended deck width for this contract is large, or wider. So, um... It means that it's going to take your mower a little bit longer if you're using a smaller mower like we are. It, you just kind of have to figure that out on your own as you go. Uh, I don't have a good way to figure that out, in all honesty. I just knew it because I've done the level so many times that I have an idea for how long each level is going to take. So we're going to go ahead and start the contract. I'm not going to go through all the basics anymore on each one. I am going to show you the uh, ground check phases for every level, just because there are achievements tied to them. But I will not be showing you all of the mowing. You don't need to see all of that. We're just going to run through and find all of the ground check items. And once we're done, we'll return. And I will return to you guys once we're done. Welcome back, ladies and gents. I just realized I didn't actually show myself ever damaging the ground. So what I'm going to do is just drive around in a circle. You can see where the, the ground gets damaged there when you do damage it. So, um, that's what it looks like when you damage the ground. As you can see, we got the contract done in about 17 minutes. A little bit less than that, considering I decided to drive in circles for a little bit there. But, uh, most of the contracts aren't going to take you 
a whole lot of time, especially once we get to the Toro motor, because the Toro motor is a beast. But As you can see, there's our post-contract screen. We didn't get a cleanup fee for the ground damage, so I have no idea what what it wants from us. We didn't hit anything, but we did get a 25 cent collision for driving uh, straight up the ramp instead of backing up it. Again, that will, I recommend just taking the 25 cent hit. It's significantly faster. And once we get past that contract screen, we're gonna get our third achievement for earning our first RP rank up. And our fourth achievement. We're driving a total of one mile in career mode. We're now going to advance to our third contract, and this will be the last contract that we'll be able to do together. Um, beyond this point in all of my playthroughs, the contracts randomize completely, and I will no longer be able to uh, tell you what contracts I did so that you can do them. Um, the Jefferson Garden, to my knowledge, is always one of the three contracts that shows up here and that's the one we're going to be doing um, if it's not there just choose the quickest contract but and every time all of my what, like six to eight playthroughs of this game now the jefferson garden has been here to be able to cut so once again we'll just pick all of the stuff we need we have a 99.5 percent cut it is a recommended cut time of 2530, but it does have a very high recommended deck width. So this one might be a little bit longer for us, um, but it's not a very difficult cut in all reality. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to get our first valuable, ladies and gents. So when you do a level that has a valuable, I highly recommend doing the ground check first. The reason being, once you get the ground check done, the clock stops until you start mowing. And that gives you an unlimited amount of time to run around and explore. Um, I do apologize if there's any slowdown or choppiness in the litter and ground check phases. My PC does not seem to like recording the ground check phases. Um, I'm not sure why, but... It certainly stressing my computer out quite a bit. So if it is getting choppy, I do apologize. Once you're done with that, you'll notice the clock in the upper right hand corner is done. Um, and you have an unlimited amount of time to explore. So you can use that to search for valuables. If you want to do that on your own and try to find everything, feel free. This is going to be the first level that has one. And I will be pointing out what levels have them later on. Uh, as we go through the game together. But this is the Jefferson Garden of the Hilltop House. Over here is the Davies Garden of the Hilltop House. And both of them share this common area in the middle with the supercar here. I guess it's a garage, essentially. And so you can get this valuable with the Jefferson Garden contract or the Davies Garden contract, but the Jefferson Garden is always the first one that shows up. So to find the valuable, go over to the car, and someone left their car keys on the rear left wheel well hill here. So hold A to turn them in, and you'll get an achievement for turning in your first valuable. How uh, I do want to point in, point out, from this point on, um, any valuable that you pick up does not count for the 16 valuable achievement until you get past the post-contract screen. So that achievement pops there, but you don't have any credit for the valuable towards the achievement for picking up all 16 unique valuables. Um, I'm going to stay with you for a little bit here. We're going to refill our fuel, but... And I'm just going to go over valuables really quickly. Uh, we need a six centimeter cut. Um, in the initial release of the game, the valuables were glitched and you could replay litter contracts to collect valuables. Um, they fixed that. That's no longer an option. 
So you have to play all 16 unique, or uh, find all 16 unique valuables as we ram into the hedge. The hedge is difficult to tell how close you can get. And the collisions don't really matter too much. Um, back to the valuables, though. It used to be that you could just replay litter contracts and get your valuables um, over and over again. And it would count as unique valuables towards the achievement. It does not anymore. So um, there are 16 unique valuables. I do have a separate video on my channel that you can go and check out if you want to know where they are on your own. But uh, I will be showing all 16 of them being picked up as we go through the career mode together. Uh, you just have to run and press A on them. And then once you press A on them, um, at once the post contract screen shows up, you'll get a money reward for finding the valuable. Uh, sometimes it's as little as just 20 bucks. Sometimes it's a ton of money. I think the highest I've seen is 750. Um, although they may have changed that since the initial version of the game launched too. And that's a pretty quick way to earn some extra money, is just go through and get the valuables. Unfortunately, since that they don't respawn on litter contracts, it's not an infinitely respawning extra way to get money. So that's just another reason why we had to change our uh, walkthrough here. Because uh, I, I started recommending playing the litter contracts to get the valuables and getting an extra 300 bucks while you were skipping the contracts and of course that's no longer an option so um, but we will be going over all of the valuables the timestamps will show you when I pick up a valuable below each of my videos so if you are looking for a certain one in my career mode you can jump to that or again I have that separate video on my channel detailing all 16 locations and that's kind of all I wanted to cover. I knew it was going to be a couple minutes, so I figured I'd just start the contract and chat with you guys and gals for a couple minutes while I explain it. But I have nothing else, so I will rejoin you when the contract is finished. And we're back, ladies and gents. Another contract complete. As you can see, we're at about 19 minutes there. We ran into a lot of things, but the fines aren't really... All that substantial so but as you can see there we got 750 bucks for returning the car keys so we got quite the payday today and what we're gonna do now ladies and gents So we're going to go over to the HQ tab and we're going to upgrade our HQ. We need to have a second bay in our uh, headquarters so that when we hire a second employee, the employee will have a second vehicle for them to use. Um, unfortunately, we always have to be working and so we can't take a day off and have our employees do all the work. We have to work. Seems rude, but it's the truth. If we get sick and die or something, our company will cease to function because our employees can't mow without us doing something as well. But from this point on, ladies and gents, all of the contracts are going to be different. Now, as you can see, we got the Davies Garden now. We got... Uh, the paddock at Old Nook Cottage and the gardens of 54 Coville Street, more than likely your contracts are going to be different from mine. Um, from this point on, I cannot really give you any specific contract information. I do recommend you try to do the ones that are the shortest cut time for now because we have a very weak mower. Um, until we get the Toro, you're going to want to try to do the quickest contracts. And in this situation, the gardens of 54 Coville Street are going to be the quickest. All you really need to do is look at the recommended deck width to determine what the quickest contract is more than likely going to be. 
and in this case it's the gardens of 54 Coville Street. So from this point on in your playthrough, ladies and gents, you're going to want to be looking for the uh, valuable contracts as well as going through and doing the shortest contract. If you see a level with a valuable pop-up, ignore going for the shortest contract and get the valuable done. Um, there are... 16 valuables spread out amongst the levels. We just did the first one, uh, the Jefferson Garden, but I'm going to go ahead and list them off very quickly. The Rowley Manor Rear Garden has a wallet. The Crossley Writing School Rear Lawns has two valuables, um, one of which can only be gotten at the Rear Lawns. The second one can be gotten from any of the five uh, Crossley Writing School contracts. 54 Coville Street has headphones. 59 Coville Street has a lanyard with a keycard. 64 Coville Street has a laptop. Uh, Ripley Park has two valuables. It has a cell phone and sun uh, headphones. Excuse me. Weaver Square has sunglasses. Westwell Castle uh, Sloped Gardens or Formal Garden has a camera on one of the lion statues. The Westwall Castle Lower Bandstand Garden has headphones on the floor of the bandstand. The Adams Apple Company Orchard has headphones. Uh, the Millerbrook Garden has a laptop. The Hilltop House Jefferson Garden or Davies Garden we already covered has car keys. The Hilltop House Garden has a tablet. And the Orchard Cottage Garden has a wallet. Now, you're supposed to get all 16 of these for the achievement. I will tell you, my last playthrough, I actually unlocked this before the Westwell con uh, Castle contracts even started showing up. And those are the final contracts that you can get. So, uh, just be wary. It may still be a little weird, but eventually you're more than likely have going to have to get all 16 unique valuables to pop that achievement. So I wanted to cover that right off the bat. Um, for the valuables to count, you're going to need to finish your contract and skip the post-contract screen. I already covered that. So that's basically it. From this point on, either search for the shortest contract or if a valuable contract shows up, you're going to complete that. So we're going to go ahead and jump in to the 54 Coville Street contract. And as I said, from this point on, we are going to continue uh, showing off all of the ground checks until the achievement for picking up 250 ground items pops. Um, I don't want to... skimp out on showing you guys that even though more than likely you understand what's going to happen um, because I don't want to miss having a an achievement pop although again it should pop after the post contract screen once we have all the ground check items run to the back corner of the patio here and on this little pillar someone left some headphones to pick them up and now we're going to head back and we're going to just mow the lawn, and uh, once again, I will rejoin you guys and girls, guys and gals, excuse me, once the contract is complete. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Another contract done. I'm going to make this quick because I just had a thunderstorm roll in and I don't want to lose this hour of footage here. Um, that's going to be it for the first part of our From Zero to 1000 achievement walkthrough of Lawn Mowing Simulator. Um, if you have any questions or comments for me, as always, let me know down below. I will do my best to answer them. But if not, I will see you guys in part two in our continuing achievement walkthrough of Lawn Mowing Simulator. Take care.